November 2020, Nagorno-Karabakh war was reaching its peak. Weeks of drone attacks had shattered the Armenians who were trying to rebuild in the mountainous heart of the Nagorno, and they were succeeding, as their infantry and their Syrian mercenaries were suffering ambush after ambush in the hilly forests, as not even incendiary artillery was effective against the entrenched defenders. Even when the forest was in flames, the Armenians fought stubbornly. At last, the Seris sent their special forces, the Haspers, to take the Nagorno capital, Shusi. The Susi battle was one of the greatest battles of the Nagorno-Karabakh war, probably the key battle of the Nagorno-Karabakh war, as Sushi was the historical capital of the region. The Armenians had fortified it, and the Azerbaijanis had to took it by using special forces, light infantry, and armored vehicles against the armored vehicles, the artillery, and the infantry of the Armenians. This is a super interesting battle to, to treat from the military point of view, and that's what we are going to do. And now, let's begin! October 1st, 2020. The Seri attack has already begun. After 30 years of war threat, Christians and Muslims once again face each other in the battlefield. During the 90s, a strong Armenia launched Operation Wedding in the Mountains, which achieved a masterful victory over the Seris entrenched in the historical capital of Sushi. That victory has ensured 30 years of Armenian domination of the Nagorno-Karabakh, as well as a tense peace. But circumstances have changed. So after the fall of the Soviet Union, Azerbaijan is able to sign a lot of agreements to, to trade with the oil they have in their territory and this provides a lot of revenue for the Azerbaijan state. The Azerbaijan state invests money in getting better equipment for the army and to create a very powerful defense industry. Right? So when we compare both forces we will see that the Armenians have almost very similar equipment but 20 years old. The Azerbaijanis have the T-90S while the Armenians had the T-72B, right? Also, the Azerbaijanis invest a lot on drones and they get a lot from Israel and Turkey and this is what is going to provide them the key edge during the war. But that's material for a future video. The point here now is that in 2016 we have the first, the so-called Four Days War. It was a very short war for a small piece of territory but there we see the drones of Azerbaijan in action. Even if it is a very small war, we see how the Armenians were defeated. This is a turning point from my point of view because it let the Azerbaijanis saw that their equipment, that their material, that their army was more powerful, much more powerful than the Armenian one. On October, the Azeris launched their major offensive in southern Nagorno, a territory well suited to employ mechanized units as well as drones. Once the Azeris overcame the main Armenian defensive line, they pressed into the interior of the region. The Muslims left behind the southern plains and moved deeper into the Nagorno, towards the core of the disputed region. In the heart of the Nagorno-Karabakh we will find a lot of mountains, and inside those mountains we will find two cities. Stepanakert, the actual capital, and Shusha, the historical capital. Now, those cities are linked to Armenia through the Lachin Corridor, right? Which is used to supply both. If Lachin Corridor gets cut, both cities will be isolated. That's why it was so important to keep this corridor open. Barely one month after the war erupted, the Armenian army had been decimated by drone attacks and penetrations of Azeri armored forces. However, the latest had lost the momentum of their offensive. Winter was beginning to reach the Nagorno, the mountains offered a few unbattered roads, while the retreating Armenian troops were concentrated in Shushi and the surrounding forests. Armenians wanted to prevent the Azeris from cutting off the vital Lachin corridor, as that would be the ultimate doom for the entire Nagorno army and the cities still on their hands. While the Azerbaijanis are trying to reach Shushi, the Armenians are using two tactics. First of all, small unit counterattacks, we are speaking of companies, maybe battalions in the best case, and secondly, we are speaking about ambushes. They are going to wait the enemy mechanized forces to advance through different small paths or even roads. They are going to wait them, they are going to ambush them, and they inflict a lot of casualties on the Azerbaijanis while at the same time preventing their advance towards Sushi. The historical capital of the Nagorno, Susa, a small city of about 20,000 inhabitants, accumulated more than 2,000 soldiers along numerous material including tanks, artillery, mortars and infantry fighting vehicles. Alongside these troops were local militiamen who served as guerrilla fighters. The main challenge on defending Shusa was probably the disorganized mixture of units that arrived from Armenia and from the front lines, making very difficult to integrate such forces into a coherent defense plan, taking into account that the planners had a very little time to organize the defense.
So the Azerbaijanis try to push towards Susi, but they find a fierce resistance. Drones weren't able to find the Armenian infantry. So how do I deal with these defending Armenian troops that are waiting inside the forests? That's when the Azerbaijanis began to use the incendiary ammunition in order to create fires that prevented the Armenians from defending certain forests and certain positions. Here probably the TOS-1 thermobaric multiple rocket launcher was very effective. In October 28 and 30, the Assyria Army Special Forces went into action. Until that time, the Haspers spearheaded Assyria attacks. So now it is the time to know this unit. Haspers on the attack. These soldiers were trained by Turkish Special Forces. And for training in mountainous terrain, they got to secret bases at an altitude of 3,000 meters in Pakistan. Assyria Special Forces were founded in 1992 by the Afghans, i.e. Soviet veterans of the Afghan war, people who fought the Mujahideen and who was trained in the Spetsnaz as light infantry. The main characteristics of these forces are their ability to radiate information and request fire support, as well as their ability to infiltrate into the enemy lines in order to hit valuable tactical targets. Finally, at the start of the Battle of Susa, the Haspers were weakened to some extent, as they had suffered casualties during the fighting at the beginning of October, although that situation did not prevent them from organizing into four 100-man groups to attack. So as Sean Spencer from the Modern War Institute said, those four groups were used to infiltrate behind the Armenian lines in order to create chaos and therefore reach certain tactical objectives that were very important in order to allow the Azerbaijani forces to continue advancing towards the, the city of Shusha. Azeri Special Forces use the typical equipment of Western Special Forces, although with some differences. Usually we will see them with a multicam camouflage suitable for various types of environments, fast type helmets which allow to install various accessories, including night vision goggles, flashlights or headsets for communications. Interestingly, they tend to carry the Kalashnikov AK-74M with a fixed stock and a red dot sight. In each platoon, there is likely to be a platoon leader armed with a thermal scope and an infantryman equipped with a higher magnification optic. At this point during the war, the Azerbaijanis have a superiority regarding artillery assets, but the Armenians were able to hide some of those assets inside the forests and inside the cities. So for the Azerbaijanis it was really difficult to try to approach to the Armenians at certain places, especially at the Lashin corridor, because they got hit by the Armenian artillery hidden in a lot of places where the drones weren't so effective in order to, to find and destroy them. Beginning in late October, the Azeris used incendiary ammunition to soften Armenian defensive positions in the forests. The sunny weather also allowed the drones to operate and cut off supply convoys to Sushi, while the Haspers initiated an extensive encirclement to infiltrate the Armenian rear and surround the Kavet capital, a move that required several days of moving and fighting. Armenians suffered incredible command, control and communications problems as they got disorganized because of the large number of retreating troops and the signals equipment lost. However, they were forced to seek out and destroy the enemy saboteurs, which were actually Haspers infiltrating their rear guard. At that point of the battle, the Armenians were able to launch various counterattacks against the Azerbaijanis, and they were not pushed back just because they were able to create a coherent defensive line in the forests, and they were able to repel those attacks. First, November, the Azerbaijanis had reached a village at 5 kilometers of Shusha, and they were advancing through the ridges of the mountains surrounding that town. Only 48 hours later, on November 3rd, the Lashing Corridor was cut. A series special forces and light infantry had cut off the route and set up ambushes in several places. The Armenians were virtually isolated. The first Armenian drones began to operate in those days and served the Armenians to correct their mortar fire. However, such drones were not adequate. Based on civilian technologies, they were vulnerable to electronic warfare countermeasures, and their cameras allowed only for low-resolution images while they did not have nighttime fighting capability. On the other hand, they got effective at improving mortar fire, so they helped to score targets on the saboteurs inside the corridor. And worst of all, that same day the Haspers conquered the village of Dasalti, right next to the capital, Shusha. The action had lasted two days and probably forced the Haspers to maneuver and launch attacks from several directions. The time had come to attack the capital, but that was not an easy mission. 
Susa is tactically very well played because it is surrounded by rocks which act as a natural wall very difficult to escalate and on the other hand it has just a very few approaches through a road so it is very easy to control those. Finally there is a forest that covers the western side which can be used to advance but again there is no routes, there is no good paths there, there is not a road of course and you have to advance through it in a very complicated manner. So it is not an easy objective to, to conquest. next few days were just madness. The Armenian resistance was stronger than ever. They were launching constant counterattacks as they got support from the General Cloud, who sent fog and low clouds in order to reduce drone and artillery effectiveness. When the low clouds rolled in, the Bayraktar had to descend in order to use its cameras, at which point they were vulnerable to short range air defense, which shot down some aircraft. So, the tanks hidden in the houses came out of their shelters to support the urban counterattacks of the infantry. Now, imagine the situation. The Azerbaijani artillery is the in a lot of places, it is bombing even Stepanakert. A lot of civilians are collapsing the roads as they are trying to run away to Stepanakert and at the same time the latching corridor is completely cut off. So you know that you are not going to receive a lot of supplies. Finally it is very likely that the Armenians were quitting some troops from the northern front line in order to reinforce the defense around Susi. Defenders of Shushi had concentrated their defenses around the main access to the city. However, they had hardly any troops protecting the rocky slopes that cover the east of Shusha. A section of the battlement wasn't defended. That's right, the Haspers climbed on the slopes and surprised the defenders, who wrongly expected the Ser infantry to attack along the roads. Finally, the president of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, influenced by Putin, reached a ceasefire agreement and a division of Nagorno-Karabakh with the Armenians. On that day, November 9th, Susi fell into Azeri hands. Russian troops began to enter inside Armenia and served to seal the peace. The Armenian defeat and the Azeri conquest of Shushi. So that's how the command and control of the Armenian defenders got saturated. You know, a lot of enemies coming from a lot of sides, even with the superiority of their equipment, with the superiority of their numbers, very likely. And that's how the, the Armenians had to go back inside the city, try to defend it. And in the end, they got defeated, right? By the superiority of the Azerbaijanis. So that's all. Uh, if you want to get deeper inside this battle, I will let you a link below from uh, John Spencer, a US Army officer who, who wrote a very interesting article on this battle for the modern war institute and well that's all i hope you have enjoyed it it is a very different battle that we than we are used to see about this nagorno karabakh war and i hope you have enjoyed this video as much as me and and that's all if you want to support me i will let you some links below you can give me a like or or leave me a comment because i need to improve a lot especially i think that my english so even in spite of my broken english i hope that this is an enjoyable content for you and that's all see you in the next video